Do you realize each time you face a challenging or painful circumstance, you're an easy target for the enemy? Why? Because it's much easier to take someone out who is wounded, bleeding, and distracted than someone who is strong, healthy, and standing on guard. Satan always targets us when we are the most weak and vulnerable. He knows the specific areas and will target us accordingly. Welcome back to the Mallet Family channel, where we seek to ignite faith, hope, and purpose in living as an overcomer. This week, we will be sharing personal examples in our own lives as we talk about the lies that we face while battling difficult challenges. We also will share powerful truths that you can use as a weapon to free yourself from these lies. So you may be struggling through an, a painful event right now. Uh, it may include the loss of a precious loved one. It might be the death of a dream, um, the pain of a strained relationship, or the ongoing challenge of a chronic illness. Um, you know, our family has struggled with many why God questions over the years. We felt anger um, at what we thought were injustices that were done toward us or things that we faced that has caused anger in our lives. Mm -hmm. Do you realize each time you face a challenging or painful circumstance, you're an easy target for the enemy? Why? Because it's much easier to take someone out who is wounded, bleeding, and distracted than mm -hmm. someone who is strong, healthy, and standing on guard. Mm -hmm. Satan always targets us when we are the most weak and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. He knows the specific areas and will target us accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the biggest part of your battle in being an overcomer usually involves in recognizing where the battle truly lies. Many times I think we face our battles simply by focusing on surface uh, issues and instead of recognizing who's really behind the battle. For instance, you know, in our personal journey through pain, um, there, there's times that we've been hurt by some of the insensitive remarks by others but we've chosen to look beyond these remarks of, you know, you don't have enough faith or you'd remove your child from life support. We've chosen to forgive those who have made accusing remarks. Maybe things like, you know, because of all the issues you're facing, you're dealing with, you must have sin in your life. Um, now, anyone who truly is going through a uh, difficult journey any amount of suffering, they'll tell you that the last thing, that this is the last thing that anyone needs to hear when they are hurting. Yeah, because that's this is a it's a tactic of the enemy in taking someone out who's vulnerable, mm -hmm. and yes, Satan even uses God's imperfect children mm -hmm. in sure. trying to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And they might even have um, the right motive for doing it. But when a person is hurting and is vulnerable and is, that's the time to weep with those who are weeping. That's the time to show compassion and care. You don't, um, yeah, that's the time that they need, they need, you know, somebody to care for their heart. And yeah, you know, and Job could have used someone to care for his heart. Mm -hmm. Look at his friends. Um, mm -hmm. They came around to uh, comfort him. But who needs enemies when you have friends like Job had? Yeah, you know, there's another statement that I remember hearing, and that was um, that this person said, you know, your son wouldn't have died if you would have had enough faith. You know, at the time, it was it was shocking and, and kind of caught me off guard. Um, but I needed to look beyond that and to be able to, to recognize Satan at the very core. Uh, Satan brings accusation. Um, during times of loss and suffering, people are already asking the questions of why. They don't need us attempting to do the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. He does a much better job than what we ever can do in that. That's right. Yeah. Each of the statements Mom shared goes against the very heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He has shown us in His Word that we are to harshly examine our own hearts, 
while extending long-suffering, mercy, love, and not judgmental attitudes towards others. Mm -hmm. But too often, we do just the opposite. Our enemy isn't God, ourselves, or others. Mm -hmm. um, our enemy is Satan, and he's the author of confusion and the father of lies. It's very important to recognize and combat the lies, and speaking and claiming truth is the only way to do it. So after we've identified who our enemy is, let's look at the common lies he speaks to us when we go through difficult times. And you'll be able to see that each of these lies are rooted in fear. Satan always uses fear because it's much easier to control those who are being impacted by fear. Mm -hmm. And you know, Fear is an evil spirit. Fear is not an emotion. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something that we had to learn in our in our walk, in our journey. Um, fear is so effective in breaking down our relationship with God. Uh, fear is having a greater faith in the enemy than our faith in God. Fear is believing that God is not enough. It's always based on not truly knowing and, and understanding and trusting the heart of God. You know, we can turn um, to statistics, religion, medicine, science, but we will always come up short when our God doesn't override our fear. When we don't know God, we will live in fear. But when we deeply and personally know God, all fear will dissipate. You know, the Bible says that perfect love, that means God. God is love. God casts out all fear. Our family has certainly had more than our share of struggling with the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And we can definitely affirm that fear brings torment. Fear was robbing us of finding joy in the moment God had blessed us with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember like... Um... Uh, biopsies. You've had a number of heart biopsies. Austin, in his 16 years, probably had 40 biopsy, heart biopsies, where they go into the jugular vein, go down inside the heart, take a little tissue from inside the heart, and they test that in pathology to see if they're having rejection. And going leading up to that procedure, you did not know, they got the results later that day, you did not mm -hmm. know what your life was going to be like the next two weeks minimum mm -hmm. because you'd have the IV steroids for three days and then the steroid taper mm -hmm. and uh, it would just change everything about your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, knowing there could be rejection, knowing your life could change dramatically after mm -hmm. that day, um, there was the potential for fear to grip your life. So after Austin's cancer, um, I remember just that fear of the cancer returning, the fear of Alicia developing cancer, um, fear of having more children with heart issues. Um, I remember going in, waking up during the night and just checking them, making sure that they were still alive, they were still breathing. And, and there was just a lot of things that just promoted that fear. Um, but I think the greatest fear that I had was a fear of losing one of my children. Um, but, you know, as I look back now, I realize that if I wouldn't have learned to conquer this giant of fear, we never would have experienced the blessing of Shantae and Kyra, our two youngest girls, because the doctors had warned us, you know, many doctors had told us that we shouldn't have any other children because two out of three had to have heart transplants and just there was just a number of dynamics and the health issue I was struggling with. Um, but, you know, God took us on a journey of faith and I'm so thankful that we listen to the voice of God, um, and now we have, have the blessing of their lives. Um, but, you know, just to be clear, I, it's, I'm still tempted to give in to fear. It's still something that I struggle with. I'll struggle. But I'm still, because I'm still learning on this journey, but I am so thankful that fear doesn't control me as it once did. In my life, I've experienced the fear of short life expectancy, fear of never getting better, fear of God not being big enough to carry me through my most intense battles. Um, back in episode one called The Journey, 
I shared more about my struggle with fear after my older brother Austin died. Feel free to go back and watch that episode, but in short, watching Austin cling to life and then pass away, I realized that I would made the mistake of putting my faith in the doctors. I realized the frailty of life and that really only God knows the future. Now let me ask you, during your most painful times in life, have you ever believed the lie that God doesn't love you? Have you struggled to believe that God truly cares about what you're going through? Now, ask yourself this question, what is that based on? Does that line up with God's word? This is just one of the lies Satan has likely been telling you. But you can have freedom from these lies. We're excited to share about the truths with you today that can help you to set you free. Mm. Alicia, so what are more of the lies that we face when we're facing pain and difficult, ugly events in our lives? Well, as I'm um, living with chronic health issues, one area I've personally struggled with is the area of self-condemnation. After a loss, a hurt, or a failure, this is something we might struggle with. Mm -hmm. You know, failure to make the right choice or failure to say the right thing may cause an unhealthy guilt. So how do we know the difference mm -hmm. between learning from our mistakes and self-condemnation? Mm -hmm. Learning from your mistakes creates hope and a desire to try again. But when we are condemning ourselves, when there's self-condemnation, it inhibits or handicaps us from moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, conviction motivates you to acknowledge you're wrong, to rely on God and to grow in maturity. But self-condemnation will entrap you to face your failures alone. Mm -hmm. So it might be good to, you know, take a closer look into um, this whole self-condemnation and to see, you know, what is a lie that's rooted deeply within the, the condemnation. Um, and I think it's, it's the lie that you in Christ are not enough. It's that you are not enough. But, you know, this is simply not true. And yes, you know, we can agree with the enemy that we alone are not enough. Um, but the way to combat this lie is to read God's word and declare and claim who God says that you are. Um, claim the promises that he's given to you. Yes, each of us, we're broken and imperfect people, but Christ in you is enough. So that's, that's the way to break that lie of the self-condemnation. Another thing we often struggle with during times of pain and loss is discouragement. I've certainly been discouraged many times in my life already. I felt discouraged when my prayers weren't answered, when the healing just doesn't come as I've expected. Um, when my expectations aren't met, my discouragement can be directed towards other people, God, or my circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the lie that's often found in discouragement is very similar to the self-condemnation, but it's the lie that my life and the blessings that God has currently given me are not enough. They're not sufficient for my current joy and for my purpose. But here again, um, the way to break this lie is to proclaim and declare truth while we're in the midst of an intense battle. When we go back, go to God's word, and we ask again, you know, what does God say about me? Uh, what what promise can I claim for the circumstance? Mm -hmm. That helps to break that lie that's, that comes through in uh, times of discouragement. You know, I think about God's Word. I think about John 16, 33, where these things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, mm -hmm. I have overcome the world. You know, we'll face pain and we'll face loss in our lives, but we should choose for these difficulties 
to make us stronger mm -hmm. rather than for us to become a victim. Yes. yes. Each of us are equipped with the incredible grace of God that is more than enough to help mm -hmm. us live as overcomers. Amen. So reach out and find Jesus in your impossible and painful circumstances. Mm -hmm. Jesus is there and he's wanting to reveal himself. He's wanting for you to get to know who he really is, for you to truly trust his heart, for you to sort through the lies of the enemy and to recognize the lie and to, to recognize um, where the battle truly lies. Uh, Satan will do everything he can to distort that and to cause you to blame God um, because he, he, of course, doesn't want to be responsible. So, yeah, God really desires to have relationship with you today. So whether it is fear, whether it's self-condemnation, whether it's discouragement, whatever that you may be sensing or feeling inside, God wants to, through that, He wants to enter into a greater, closer relationship with you. So just take a moment and come to God, identify what the lie is, go to God's Word, find that truth, and, uh, and, and embrace that truth that's there for you. God bless you as you live, as you walk, as an overcomer.